In 2011, the ground off Japan's northeast coast ripped open with a force unlike anything the country had ever recorded. A magnitude 9.0 earthquake, the strongest in Japan's history, hurled the Pacific Ocean toward the coast in towering walls of water, wiping entire towns from the map and triggering the Fukushima nuclear disaster. But beneath the tragedy, everyone remembers. Something else happened. Something far more mysterious and far more unsettling because the Tohoku megaquake didn't simply shake Japan. It changed the physics of the fault system itself. Japan moved eight feet toward North America. Earth's axis shifted, and seismologists now believe this was only the beginning. A deeper, silent transformation began that day, one that is still unfolding beneath the Pacific. And what scientists discovered years later has forced them to rethink how earthquakes work, why some faults snap without warning and whether Japan's catastrophe was the first domino in a much larger chain reaction. At 2.46 p.m., an unfamiliar vibration rolled across the seafloor. Within seconds, seismic alarms lit up across Japan. Computers inside the Japan Meteorological Agency analyzed the first tremors and hesitated. The system had never seen anything like this. What it detected was already massive. But the algorithms were built to interpret ordinary earthquakes, not a rupture that would grow into one of the most violent in recorded history. The first warnings underestimated everything. The magnitude, the tsunami height, the danger. In coastal towns like Minamisan Riku and Rikuzentakata, automated sirens barely finished speaking before roads vanished under the first surge of water. Some people heard the alert, but had no time to act. Others never heard it at all, as power lines snapped and relay towers went dark. Engineers later discovered that even where sirens functioned perfectly, the earthquake's roar drowned them out. The window between warning and destruction was only minutes, and in many communities, seconds. When the tsunami arrived, seawalls designed for worst-case events were simply erased. Reinforced concrete shattered like chalk. Breakwaters snapped in half and vanished under the foam. It was the moment Japan realized something horrifying. The disaster they had prepared for was not the disaster they got. While chaos unfolded on land, something extraordinary was happening beneath the ocean floor. The fault zone off Tohoku didn't rupture like a typical megaquake. Instead, the break exploded across multiple fault segments in a cascading failure that stunned geologists. The seabed lurched by as much as 50 meters. In minutes, entire blocks of crust moved farther than scientists thought physically possible. Seafloor GPS data revealed the rupture front racing north to south, then back west like a tear in fabric spreading faster than the models allowed. The shallowest part of the fault, the region scientists thought would barely move, instead slipped the most. It was this unexpected, massive, shallow slip that fired the tsunami skyward with unimaginable speed. And when researchers reconstructed the rupture sequence, the conclusion was unavoidable. This earthquake didn't follow the rules. It rewrote them. In 2012, the Japanese research vessel Chikyu began an unprecedented mission to drill directly into the fault that had unleashed the catastrophe. It became known as the JFAST project, and what they recovered has since been described as one of the most important scientific discoveries of the decade. Deep in the core samples was a thin, gray layer of pulverized clay, only a few meters thick, but holding the answer to how the fault slipped so far. This clay had an extraordinarily low friction coefficient. Under pressure and heat, it acted like a natural lubricant. During the quake, the sliding plates heated the clay to nearly 700 degrees Celsius, hot enough to vaporize trapped water and create a process called thermal pressurization. The pore pressure skyrocketed. Friction dropped even lower. And suddenly, the boundary between the Pacific Plate and Japan didn't behave like solid rock anymore. It behaved like ice or glass, a nearly frictionless plane. This discovery shocked scientists because it meant certain faults around the world might be far more capable of catastrophic slip than previously believed. The question haunting researchers became, if this can happen in Japan, where else could the same hidden conditions exist? For most earthquakes, aftershocks fade with time, not this one. Across the Pacific Ring of Fire, seismic networks began to notice something strange. In the decade following the Tohoku disaster, the number of magnitude 6 and higher earthquakes surged dramatically, nearly triple the expected average in some regions. From Alaska's Aleutian Islands to Chile's offshore trenches, clusters of tremors illuminated fault zones once considered isolated or dormant. 
Japan's rupture had redistributed stress across the Pacific. Not instantly, but gradually, like a wave moving through rock. This wasn't a geological infection, as some dramatic headlines claimed, but it was a measurable shift in strain on major subduction zones. And one zone in particular has scientists most concerned, the Nankai Trough, just south of Tokyo. Government assessments now estimate a 70% chance of a magnitude 8 to 9 event within the next 30 years, an earthquake that would dwarf most disasters in Japan's modern history. Tohoku wasn't just a tragedy, it was a preview. Even today, more than 200,000 people remain in temporary housing, a number almost impossible to comprehend. Entire towns still struggle to rebuild their identity. Psychologists report long-lasting trauma, children startled by noises that resemble distant waves, elderly residents who refused to sleep near windows facing the ocean, communities fractured not just physically, but emotionally. The economic cost surpassed $235 billion, and the psychological toll, though harder to measure, is even deeper. Japan is a nation that understands earthquakes better than almost any other, but nothing prepared them for this. More than a decade later, scientists still analyze the Tohoku rupture, not out of fear, but out of necessity, because what happened that day revealed a truth about Earth's most powerful faults. Some are capable of slipping far more violently and far more suddenly than textbooks once claimed. Japan's tragedy forced researchers to rethink seismic hazard models from California to Indonesia. It changed evacuation plans. It transformed tsunami forecasting. It led to a complete overhaul of Japan's warning systems. But perhaps its most important legacy is the reminder it left behind. The planet's most dangerous forces rarely reveal their full potential until the moment they break. Was Tohoku a once-in-a-millennium event? Or the first sign of a new era of megaquakes around the Pacific Rim? Scientists don't know the answer. But they do know this. The next great rupture is already building somewhere, in silence, deep beneath the ocean floor. And when it finally breaks, we will once again learn just how powerful the Earth beneath us can be. More than 13 years after the Tohoku disaster, Japan now stands at the frontier of a new era of earthquake preparedness, one shaped not by fear, but by innovation. The country that endured one of the strongest earthquakes in recorded history is quietly building the most advanced seismic resilient society on Earth. Across the coastline, new tsunami barriers stretch for kilometers, not as static concrete walls, but as part of a dynamic system of elevated escape routes, reinforced ports, and vertical shelters designed to withstand waves far larger than those anticipated in 2011. Entire towns have been rebuilt on higher ground. Schools now conduct drills where children can reach safety within minutes, not through rehearsed fear, but through practiced confidence. But the most transformative work is happening deep in the data. Japan's seismic network, already the world's most sophisticated, is evolving into something unprecedented. Thousands of sensors, satellites, fiber optic cables, and offshore instruments feed real-time information into AI models that learn from every tremor. These systems don't just warn, they analyze, forecast, and adapt. Engineers envision a near future where early warning alerts are tailored down to individual neighborhoods, where infrastructure can shut down automatically, and where the first message sent during a crisis is a precise instruction, not a blind alarm. Even the ocean floor is being wired. New cables running into the Japan trench monitor pressure, changes that once took months to detect. Now they appear on screens within seconds, giving scientists a direct line to the fault responsible for one of the world's most powerful earthquakes. If you made it this far, I'm curious. Do you think megaquakes are becoming more frequent, or are we just more aware of them? Drop your thoughts below. I read every comment.